Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. My name is Dustin Heiner, and I'm here to help you get financial independence. Quit that J-O-B by any means possible, by real estate investing, by starting a business, but whatever possible way that you could find. And today, super pumped to bring on a fantastic expert who has helped lots of other people to invest and to have their own business, but not just any business, but learning how to become in the franchise business. Now, I personally had a business that was a franchise. I, I was a franchisee. So I started working with another company, started making money. It was great. Everything works out really, really well because you get a systems and procedures and processes and marketing and all that good stuff. So I'm super excited to bring on to share with you my passion, which is business and somebody who's really, really awesome at business as well as helping people to franchise as well. I have Greg Moore on the show from Franchise Maven. Greg, thanks for being on the show. Justin, I appreciate you having me. Thank you very much. So this is when I when I was talking to you about the idea of bringing you on and talking about businesses and franchises, I it like really excites me. And the big reason why is even though I'm a real estate investor, which I love investing in real estate, that's literally what I do. But with that, I'm a business owner and my businesses own the real estate. That's really how it works out. Or if I have another business, um, if whatever business I create, it owns inventory or it has a product or service that it sells. And so if you take my opinion, if you take anything that you're going to be doing investing wise or business wise, that perspective, like you have a customer you got to serve, you have a product you got to deliver. If you have that perspective, you're going to do well. So talk to me a little bit about what you do and how you got into the coaching people and showing people how to get into franchises. Thank you, Dustin, for that. Well, I got started in franchising was actually in high school. Uh, surprisingly enough, you know, back in the 70s, back when I was in high school, kind of dating myself there. Uh, the one thing most everybody got into for their first job was fast food. So the first place I went to for fast food was Taco Bell. Uh, unbeknownst to myself at the time, I actually worked for a master franchiser. Uh, for Taco Bell. I learned that later uh, as I was moving up on the ranks and I managed uh, some of her restaurants and she owned about 50 restaurants throughout uh, Woodland, California and Sacramento, California area. So that's my first foray into uh, the franchising world itself. I went on to manage other restaurants, got a degree in engineering and physics, became a microelectronic circuit engineer. Uh, while I was doing that, I went and got a degree in business. While I got a degree in business, I read Robert Kiyosaki's books, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That about ruined my corporate career for me. At that point in time, I realized that there is definitely something better out there uh, than this, you know, uh, seven to five. You know, it's normally nine to five, but for us in the engineering world, it's about seven to five. So I went with another engineering friend of mine. We bought dry cleaners, bought rental properties, and one of the dry cleaners had uh, four drop-off locations. We had some storage units on there as well, so we had storage units. So I was doing my little side hustle on that while I was being an engineer. Uh, but eventually, I left the corporate world. Uh, enough of that, or they had enough of me, as uh, what it was, because uh, I was too busy with my other stuff. I sold off all that, sold it to the uh, gentleman I was working with at the time, decided to go into my own business. I did not have the latest, greatest idea. I did not know exactly what to do, but I remembered my days back from Taco Bell, and I remember that franchising was a lot of fun. I could go into any restaurant, and they had the same processes, the same procedures, so they're really easy to operate. So I just went click happy out on the internet and just said, franchise this, franchise that. And I got lots of different franchise development people calling me. Finally got a hold of a couple of franchise consultants who knew they existed. I didn't at the time. They told me to stop, put a hold on it there. Let's take a look at what it is you're trying to accomplish. Working with those two, they came up with a great franchise for me. Uh, so I invested in a franchise, uh, Schooley Mitchell Telecommunications Consulting. I did that for a couple of years. But what I really liked was what those consultants were doing. I thought that was the most fascinating thing in the world. So after running that franchise for a while, I uh, sold that one off, went back to the consultants, said, what do you guys do? You get a work from home. You get to work with all sorts of fascinating people throughout the United States and actually all over the world. Teach me what you do. I want to do that. That was 10 years ago, and I haven't looked back since. 10 years ago. And now, do, no, let me ask you. Do you own any franchises right now? And how many in the past, like your, your lifetime, how many have you been a part of? So I do not own any franchises right now. I just run my own business, Franchise Maven. The Schooley Mitchell Telecommunications Consulting franchise was the only franchise that I personally owned myself. So just that one and then work for that master franchise uh, or over in Taco Bell. That's it. And then how many have you, how many people have you helped to get into franchises? Uh, just a little over 200 in the last 10 years or so. 
That's fantastic. Now, I like I said, I personally had a franchise. I just found a company that looked like they would do really well as a pizza company. And I reached out to them and started, I just basically inquired about a franchise and I had no clue what I was doing. I didn't have any idea what I was looking at a contract wise. I signed, I'm really blessed I didn't get stuck with anything because you never know what you're signing if you don't read it. And I could have got stuck with something, but I didn't. So I was really blessed. Um, Everything worked out really, really well though. Really enjoyed the franchise. Now, Let's say somebody is wanting to get into any business. They want a business, a successful business that they could plug and play. You know, they can really just ju- really jump right into because they want to quit their job. They want to not work for somebody else, but be independent. What should we do? Is the first thing like looking for somebody that actually, you know, finds franchises for you? Or should we look for them ourselves? Like, how should we get started in looking to be a franchisee? Well, in my experience, I started out just going click happy on that, uh, Dustin, and that was a bit much. Uh, so one thing to know about franchise consultants, one, there are a few of us out there. Two, we do not charge anything for our services. The franchisors pay us a referral fee, so we are free to you. So what I would do if I was out starting new is I would go out and interview a few different franchise consultants on that one. Now, I'd prefer to just come straight to me and work with me, but I realize not everybody's going to. So interview a couple of them. There's some out there. Make sure they've got the experience. Make sure they work with a few hundred different uh, franchises out there because they are going to really guide you and, and help you because we know which franchises are, are doing well, uh, which franchises are not so well. Uh, but most importantly, we talk with those franchisors all the time. So we know who they are looking for that will make a su- successful franchisee in their system. Now, all we need to do is get together with you, find out where have you been? So what do you bring to the table? What skill set? Where are you at now? Are you working full time? Do you want to keep your job? Do you want to leave your job? And then where do you want to be five to 10 years from now? So that when I gather that information from you, I know what you're looking for in a potential franchise, service industry, brick and mortar, all sorts of questions we'll go through. But we really help you kind of define things. Uh, We'll supply you with the franchise attorney, as you just mentioned, Dustin, you signed a contract on that one. We will supply you with a good franchise attorney that will let you know what you're getting yourself into before you sign that contract. I add funding partners as well. If you need CPAs, we've got the whole bit. So we really help you uh, and guide you along on that. We're your guide through the whole uh, process, the due diligence process. So there's two things that I love about what you said. Well, let I me, mean, everything, I'm 100% on board. But one thing struck me was, so I have a conference called the Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference. And I, when I was building my company, I started calling hotels to try to find locations for the conference to be at. That was so much work. I had no clue what I was doing. I was calling so many different hotels. And I, th- I thought, this is so exhausting. And I was really blessed that I had actually three friends who had their own conferences, really amazing conferences. And I was telling them, oh, that's what I'm doing. They said, why are you doing that? Or especially one specifically, his name's PT. He said, why are you calling a hotel? Stop doing that. I'll put you in touch with my uh, conference, uh, like event finder lady. And she doesn't, you don't pay her, the hotels pay her. So she does all the work, does all the contracting, does everything, and the hotels pay for it. I'm like, that's a like literally win 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 for for me and for them and for the uh, contractor. So that's number one. Uh, but number two, I had no clue what I was doing, and having somebody that actually knew what they were doing, that had the contacts, that could actually make sure that everything was working well, that the contracts are going to be fine, that the they knew which companies or hotels to actually work with, everything from the above. That's what was so amazing with working with somebody like that. Like that. Now, when you said that you don't. Um, you don't actually get paid from the client, which is you know the person that wants that's thinking about franchising. That's fantastic. Now with that, I also heard that you also figure out which ho- um, uh, conferences, not conferences, franchises are doing well, and that actually fit the person. So walk me through, like if you're if I'm going to be going to you and say, well, Greg, I want to do a franchise. How do we make sure that we find the right franchise that's going to be the fit for me? Ah, Dustin, good question. I've got a li- I've got a list of questions that we go through on that one. So just you know, make it brief for this this podcast. One of the first things that I may ask you is when you're looking at a franchise, when you want to uh, when you want to uh, invest in that sort of business, are you looking for a franchise that has been around for many many years and has a hundred or more franchisees, or are you okay with an emerging franchise? Basically, what's your risk tolerance? So I'll ask you that on that. 
we'll look at would you like you wouldn't interested in more in a, like a brick and mortar place you build it and they will come general theme uh general investment 250 300 000 on up or would you like to start with something a little bit smaller service <clears throat> excuse me a service industry uh, your clients don't necessarily know you exist until they need you. Good franchise system drives people to you when that need arises. But now you're looking at $150,000 or so on that one. A little bit smaller investment. Doesn't matter which one you do. Uh, the amount of money you can make is going to be pretty much the same either way. Just depends on the franchise system. I'll also ask you, Dustin, what kind of employees do you want to work with? Are you looking for simple retail type business if you're doing that? Easy to replace and you know move through employees. You want more sophisticated retail, more sophisticated service. You okay with working with electricians? You okay with working with plumbers? Do you want essential services? So that's, there's a lot of different questions that we'll go through together to determine what your likes and dislikes are and where your risk level is at. Yeah, I and that's interesting because as you're going through those questions, I was realizing that like what my answers would be. And I could see how that would gear to what a certain type of uh, company that I would want to work with at being a, their franchisee. And what's great is you already have a list of different franchises. Like you have hopefully a good amount of different franchises. You can figure out which one's the best for the person that you're working with. Okay. So let's say we get through all these questions. And the one thing you mentioned a little bit earlier was funding. Like you have ways for, for financing and funding uh, for the people that you're working with. I think that's Pretty amazing. Like that's a huge thing. Talk to me about the financing aspect because that's the first thing that comes to at least my mind, but maybe most people. Well, I'd love to do a franchise, but it's like you know a million dollars to start this franchise with McDonald's or whatever it might be. But talk to us about the money that it takes to uh, franchise, as well as how we can get past that. Excellent question, Dustin. So first thing, the two different franchise systems that we have there: the brick and mortar and the service industry. Brick and mortar, like the McDonald's. Uh, like Taco Bells, you know, Amco, Meineke, Supercuts. Generally speaking, that's going to be a larger investment. Probably minimum $250,000, $300,000. Franchisers are going to be looking for a net worth from you for of about $500,000 or so. It varies, but pretty much ballpark figure there. Uh, they want to make sure you don't run out of money. Uh, you're going to the service industry. Service industry is going to be a little less. You don't need a big build out. You don't need a building. You're going to go to your clients generally, work from home, small office. 150,000, give or take, 100,000 on the low end if you're just working from home, a couple hundred thousand on the high end if there's some uh, uh, additional equipment needed on that. So to fund those franchises, two different ways to go. You can use other people's money or you can use your own money. So if we want to use other people's money, we're getting a loan. I have people that work specifically with franchises on a regular basis. They fund the franchises. Franchises are easy to fund because they have that proven track record already with the different loan companies that we work with. That part's easy. Franchise is no issue. All it comes down to is your credit. As long as you have 650, 700 credit, you've got the necessary net worth. That part's pretty simple and easy. SBA loans, you can go that route. And that's using other people's money. A lot of my investors like using other people's money as long as the investment services debt. If you don't want to use other people's money, you don't want to go into debt, then you look at something like an IRA or a 401k rollover. So a 401k rollover is what I use to do my business. I don't like going into debt, just personal. It just depends on each one. Each person is different on that. 401k rollover, you use your 401k money, roll it over into a self-directed 401k. Use that money then to invest in yourself and in your business. You're not going into debt uh, at all. You're using your own money and you're betting on yourself to win on that one. Uh, but it's personal, really personal decision on that either way you go. I personally love the idea of not getting into huge amounts of debt. Now, I, I don't get me wrong. I love utilizing and getting good debt, good debt that puts money in your pocket. But at the same time, and one of the biggest questions you asked at the beginning was like, what's your risk tolerance for whatever it is? Like, you need to understand that risk tolerance. Like my risk tolerance, I would not want to have $200,000 in loan payments that I had to pay every single month, even if it was making me a lot of money. That's It just seems like that's if something bad happened, it'd be really hard to cover $200,000 unless you're making a ton of money. But that's my personal 
you know, tolerance. I have friends that are investors. They literally are, they're making a hundred thousand dollars a month with paying $200,000 to a mortgage. So they're still making a lot of money. So everybody's risk tolerance is going to be different, which is, it's great that you're going to understand that from somebody. Now, I love that you have the financing available. Like you are, yeah, Hey, we can help you to get the financing, to be able to get into the, um, the franchise, which is terrific. Now, what's the next step after we, okay, we have a good credit score. We've already talked to you. We want to start moving to, forward with either a brick and mortar or a service industry? What would be the next step that somebody would have to do? Next step is up to me. So I've got all that information. I know what you're looking for. So I'm going to go out and find franchises that not only are a good fit for what you're looking for, but also I'll get with the franchisors and talk about the demographics of your area to make certain that franchise, it will work in your area. So once I've done that, it takes me a couple of days, I'll bring back to you five or 10 different opportunities on that. I send you out my one pagers on each one give you a chance to look them over. We get together again, go over each one. And we want to narrow that down, that list of five or 10 different opportunities down to two or three that you're looking at, you're picturing in your mind, you know, all things being equal. I can see myself doing that. That'll work. We then start the due diligence process. I will then introduce you to the franchisors. You will start learning from the franchisors. We'll go through our due diligence process. We'll go through the, the economics of each one, the marketing, uh, training, how they're going to find you clients, if they need to help you find employees, uh, if it's a more sophisticated retail or something in the plumbing electrical, they're going to go through all of that for you. They're going to go through their franchise disclosure documents with you. At that point in time, after they're done with that, you've got a good feel for the business. We meet every week or you know, seven to 10 days, depending on how fast or slow you want to go, all up to you. And we'll discuss what you've learned from each one of those franchises. One of the things that we want to make certain along the way is if is franchising right for you to begin with, then if it is, we will find you the right franchise. But I don't assume that everybody's going to get into franchising. Franchising is not for everybody. And I don't try and sell it to you like it's the next greatest thing to slice bread. For some people, it's not. Uh, some people would be better off just running their own business. But I will take you through that due diligence process of finding out if those franchises are right for you, if franchising is right for you. So we'll go through the process together. After the franchise disclosure documents, you will be encouraged and expected to call upon as many franchisees that it takes for you to get a good feel for that business. So you're going to be validating and verifying everything that that franchise told you on that. Don't trust me. Don't trust the franchisors. Those franchisees are brutally honest with you. They are just a, quite a great group of people. They will tell you how it is on that one. And you'll make friends along the way. So the franchisor is going to help you and have their policies, procedures, step-by-step -step process in place to help you grow. You're going to be making friends with those franchisees along the way. They're going to help you grow as well. Because for the most part, every franchise gives a protected territory. So you're never competing with each other. That varies from franchise to franchise. But generally speaking, that's what it is. So at the end of all that, you made a lot of new friends. You learned a lot of new things. You go meet the franchisors in person at their offices. Meet with them face-to-face. -face, ask those really difficult questions. Get to know them. And then they send you home and you figure out if that franchise is right for you. So what problems could come up? Have you seen in potential contracts for the franchisee? Like if you, you might be seen, you've seen lots of contracts, but is there anything that we should keep an eye out for if we're getting a contract and we're going to be signing something? Is there anything that, that comes to mind that we should be keeping an eye out for? Like, Hey, this, this clause or that clause or term term or something like that. Yeah. The one thing that my uh, franchise attorney and I got a couple of them out there, I'll do it for you. But the one thing my franchise attorney that does most of the contracts for me uh, that looks out for uh, is um, uh, your uh, personal involvement in the business itself, your personal obligations on that one. If something should uh, you know go wrong, what are you uh, uh, personally responsible for? So he tries to get that removed uh, as much as possible from that. So that's something to look for because you don't want to be you want to separate business and yourself. You want to be different. So the business is a business. If it, something dreadfully happens, you know, somebody in the family gets sick, somebody dies, you have to move, you can't do it. Uh, you don't want to be personally responsible for the payments of any of that franchise. So that is the one thing. Always look out for it. Get a great franchise attorney and they will limit that personal liability on you as much as they can. That's great insight. Just like if you're getting a commercial loan for real estate investing, um, I don't, I, as best I can, I try not to have a recourse, which means they come back to me and come after me and my assets, but because it's a business, I'm creating a business that's its own entity. Okay, cool. So 
let's say we're going to start moving forward. We have the attorney. He's ready for it. And one thing I love about a franchise is because they have the systems and procedures and processes like you talked about. They even have the marketing. They lock down that area so that you're the only business there, which is great. You know, they, they give you that, that area ter- territory. And so let's say we sign the contract. It's time to get started. What is the next step in that process? Once it's time to get started, that's when you've already determined that that franchisor is going to have something in place to help you out. So if it's a brick and mortar, you want a grand opening, something of that sort. Uh, if it's just a service industry, uh, then you want them getting that website going, driving people to you. Uh, maybe you look for a call center. So you want to make certain they have the call center in place where they're handling calls. You are not. These are the things that you've already verified and validated that the franchisor is doing for you. These are the things that you want to get set up and get going, the franchisor is going to be right there on the call. And you're going to have verified everything that it is. So once you get settled, once you get opened up, you're going to have that franchise. You're going to have that mentor in place that they're going to help you out and they're going to help you grow your business. Uh, You want to determine all that ahead of time, who the mentor is going to be, how often you two are going to meet together on that one. What are your key indices that you're going to be looking for? So you want all those in place before you get that open. But that franchisor is going to be right there. That's what you're paying the franchise fee for. That's what you're paying the royalties for is to have those people there to help you out. Plus all the friends that you've made along the way. Totally. And I'm looking now, I wish I would have known that they should have had a mentor, the franchise that I got set up with. I didn't have a mentor. It was just like, here you go. And just start giving us money. Or at least I didn't think to ask because I didn't know there should have been a mentor and they never offered, but maybe they don't have one, which is, you know, maybe probably would just phone call that they'd be able to help me out. But didn't have that in place, which that would be a very fantastic thing. Now, what would your involvement be once they get started and they're running the franchise? Is it, do you help out at all? Do you give them any insights or is that time to now your, your job's done just like when I'm working with my, uh, the lady that gets me the conference hotels, once we're done, she then finds me the next hotel for the next year. So what's your involvement after everything starts running? I'm done. That's it. Uh, I still stay. Yeah. So my involvement is over with. I turn you over to the franchise or I keep in touch as much as possible with them. If they need any extra, you know, marketing or advertising, generally they don't. But if they need anybody else or any systems, uh, they might come to me and ask me. But for the most part, that's it. So what are some highlights and lowlights of owning your own franchise. You know, you're having a business, you have overhead, you have employees. So there could be some ups and downs there. But what are some highlights and lowlights of having your own franchise? Well, the lowlights, you got to, um, one of the uh, things I point out, you know, on my website, I've got the seven mistakes to avoid on there. One of the things you have to make certain is you've got the capital to do it. So make certain ahead of time and know that you're not going to be rich in a year or two on that. So one of the lowlights is just making certain that you've got the capital and you realize how much you're going to be spending each month before that money starts coming in. That'll be one of the questions. And I'll have a list of questions for you for the franchisors and the franchisees. But that's going to be one of the questions that you're going to ask the franchisees is how long did it take you to get to where you want to be? What did you have to do to do it? How much did it cost you to do it? So one of the things that I would try and emphasize, and sometimes, you know, some of my people come back and said, you know, that's a lot of money to get this to get this up and going. I said, well, that's one of the things we found out along the way. And one of the things you've got to put a spreadsheet together on to know what is it going to take to do that. Uh, so that's a big challenge. The other big challenge is if you're doing it like semi-absentee is that one of the low, low lights is that you got to know that you're going to have to get a manager right away to do it. You can run many franchises semi-absentee where you're managing the manager and you're managing profit and loss statements. Just know that you're going to have to go out there and get that manager to run it. Uh, for you on that one. You know, on the highlights, quite a few of those franchises will help you find that types of people uh, to go out there and do it. So that's one of the things that you want to look for. Uh, It's a really good feeling. My people really have enjoyed it uh, when they've gotten into the franchise system and when things start going right away. It's a little little much, a little bit sometimes at first for them. But once everything starts clicking into place, uh, as you said, you didn't have a mentor, but you know, you can still go back and call that franchise. They want to make certain that you succeed on that one. So they're going to be there. It does not look good in their franchise disclosure documents because they have to have a list of people that started the franchise and are no longer running it. It does not look good when they have failures in their system. So one of the highlights is that, boy, they're going to do everything it takes to get you out there to make certain that you are successful. Uh, So just go with what they tell you. Uh, Try to avoid doing things differently. 
when you first start out, get to know the systems first, follow the process and procedures. If you want to deviate at a later time, once you've got everything down, that's fine. But uh, one of the highlights is you've got everything in place right there. Just run with it and go with it and call that franchise whenever you have any issues or call your friends, uh, that the other franchisees, they'll always help you. The way I think of franchise is it's a fast track way to get success because when you're starting your own business, you have to develop your own processes, your own systems. Like you have to develop everything on your own, which takes a lot of work and time. But a franchise, like they already have that for you. They already have the systems and procedures and process. And I really appreciate how you said, try not to change much when you're starting out because they know what they're doing. They've done it before. They've helped other people. And so I really love that. Now, talk to me a little bit about, uh, more about the systems and procedures and the processes that as a business owner, we're going to get from these franchises. Is there anything that else that we could look at, like make sure that we get the right um, software that they recommend and don't try to skimp on this, like get the right people? Like, what are your thoughts about the systems and procedures there? Great question, uh, Dustin, on that one. And, you know, that is that is why you get into a franchise. There's the differences between running your own business and running a franchise. Uh, just a little quick aside on that one. And you may be better off running your own business. But what you want to look for a franchise, the fast track, is you want, since you're paying that money, you want to look at getting to where you want to be two to three years quicker with a franchise than if you were to do it yourself on that one. Now, as far as getting the uh, getting everything fast track, you're going to have in the franchise disclosure documents, you're going to have a list under item number seven, which is the total investment of who you pay uh, what to and when. And it's going to have a list of all the things that you're going to need. And if there's software systems in there, then you know you want to make certain that you use the ones that are recommended by the franchisor. Franchisors are usually pretty, uh, depending on the franchise, they can be pretty lenient about which way you want to go and which you want to use. Generally, you don't want to skimp on things. You want to do everything, as you indicated, Dustin, what the franchisor told you what to do. And again, you're going to be calling up the franchisees and saying, did you use all these systems that the franchisor told you to do? Now, I've had people that deviated a little bit from the start when they first got out there wanting to do something different. Because uh, you know, a lot of my people are like vice presidents and presidents of companies, so they know what they're doing. So they've deviated, uh, hasn't always worked out on that one. Uh, but just make certain that if you've got, as you indicated, Dustin, they've got the systems in place, they've got the processes in place, follow those, go with what they recommend to begin with. And that makes uh, the transition so much easier, smooth operating, smooth sailing on that one. Then as you go down the road, you start learning about it then maybe you come up with something different because that's how a franchise evolves. Is there franchisees come up with new and different ideas and everybody works together to help everybody grow? I think that's great. Now, out of the couple hundred people that you've worked with and coached, that it sounds like that is something that we absolutely as a franchisee need to follow that because more than likely they already have a great system. So, you know, because you're already paying for that system, but what other like, if you have had any failure, is there a, uh, of any franchise E, any failures that they might've done that's like a common thread, like they they change the systems and they don't follow through or they don't put money towards marketing. Like, is there any common thread that you've seen of maybe franchisees that haven't been as successful as they should have been because they've done this, that, or the other? Yeah, the one main thing that we see, Dustin, when we see the failures in the system on that is that the person that was vetted out by the franchise to run that franchise then turns it over to a family member to operate who has not been vetted out by the franchise. That's our biggest failure that, that we see uh, in the system itself. Because that person that comes in that takes over may not be the person that uh, should be running it because they don't have the skill set necessarily to do that. Uh, the other thing is just uh, some things that are out of our control or out of you know the franchisee's control is that a spouse has to move out of the area uh, so they don't have so, uh, direct control or they can't see that franchise on a regular basis. There are franchises where you can you, they don't mind if you run them remote, remotely like that, but it's a bit more challenging when you can't be in the area to oversee things. You really have to have a good manager to do it. So those are probably the two biggest things is just turning it over to an, a family member to operate and then just people moving out of the area and not having good oversight on that. That's interesting. I ne literally ne that never came into my mind that somebody would do that, but it makes complete sense. And here's what I'm thinking: like if I'm going to get a franchise and have a family member run it, well, from the start, like get that in your mind. There might be somebody that would actually be in your family that could be running it. Get that in your mind because if they're going to be running it, like it, if you're not going to be a part of it, it just makes sense that it's tailored to you. And if it's you're bringing somebody else in, 
that's going to be really difficult. Now, I had a question because I've heard about McDonald's franchises and Chick-fil-A franchises completely different from what I could tell. Like the, I just was curious about the franchise for Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A, what I've heard is you don't really own anything. You're just basically like a general manager of it and you get you don't get a lot of profits. Do you know much about the Chick-fil-A franchise? Yeah, I do. I've actually met with them uh, before. It, um, I think it was something for veterans that I was working with at a veterans meeting with them. Great people. So the Chick-fil-A franchise is kind of a loose uh, interpretation of a franchise. So what you do with that one is that you apply for a job. You give them $10,000 to apply for it. Uh, they will uh, find the location for you. They will tell you where it's going to be. You will go work that. You will generally work that, obviously, not seven days a week, only six, uh, Monday to Saturday. But to start off with, they want you there at that business from, you know, Monday through uh, Monday through Saturday all the time with Sundays off. Uh, very good people. Very good business. I believe they have a profit sharing program. That's how you get paid on that. Keep in mind with Chick-fil-A, as opposed to McDonald's and some of the other ones, you don't own anything. Since it is very cheap, $10,000, that just means that you're applying for a job, a very good job. Uh, from what I understand from the people that I've operated, they had a couple of franchisees there and they're pleased as punch. On that one, they're very picky about who they bring in, obviously. Uh, but at the end of the day, the franchise that you own and operate other than the Chick-fil-A, that is yours. So at the end of the day, if you want to sell it, you can sell it. You're going to be signing a contract with the franchise for five or 10 years, depending on what it is. That doesn't mean you have to stay five or 10 years. You can sell it at any point in time. If that franchise is doing great, then you just tell the franchise or you want to sell it. First thing the franchise is going to do is tell other franchisees. And if it's doing great, one of the other franchisees will pick it up. So with the Chick-fil-A, you don't have anything to sell at the end of the day. You've got a great job you work with wonderful people. Uh, you get paid great money. Uh, love, everybody loves you. Everybody loves your chicken sandwiches. Uh, but you don't have anything uh, to sell at the end of the day. So there's no real exit strategy except for saving your money on that war with the franchises. You have plenty of different opportunities for exit strategies. On that, turn it over to manager, have it as annuity to run and operate on that, sell it, and buy a new one. Uh, it's yours. Yeah, and I'm glad you you explained how you don't actually own anything because that's what I heard. I was like, you're just basically applying for a job. Like you're paying money to apply for a job, which like you're saying, it's a great job. So I'm not knocking Chick-fil-A at all. I think it's going to be really good for lots and lots of people. But I personally, I really love getting the entire value of what I build. Like I like the term successfully unemployed because I found a way to provide for myself and my family without working a job, working for somebody else. And so don't get me wrong, Chick-fil-A is going to be great for the owner, sorry, the operator there. But I like getting the 100% value of what I build in the business. I want to be able to own things. So that's what I absolutely love about having a franchise in the traditional sense is you're just really paying a portion of the profits, getting all the business systems and procedures, you're getting the name, like you get so much great things with it. Now, Greg, there's probably lots of things we didn't cover, but we should have. Is there anything that comes to mind that I should have asked you? Um, so what kind of experience do you need when it comes to franchising? Okay. Don't think that you need a lot of experience when it comes to franchising. Okay. If you've never operated or run a team before and you want to do something semi-absentee, it might be a little bit more of a challenge for you, but there are plenty of franchises out there that are going to teach you and train you and help you with that. There's actually a few franchises out there that you can run completely absentee, not a lot, four or five, and they have a team that runs it for you. So as far as the background that you need for it uh, is just really a uh, really healthy attitude about, I want to own my own business. You don't have to have knowledge in that industry. Franchises will teach you. The franchises that I bring to you are, are going to be ones that will be a good fit for you. So even if you don't have a lot of experience, um, so for instance, you don't have any experience in sales. I'm not going to send you over to the Sandler sales training franchise because you obviously aren't going to do any good at that. Even if you hire a manager, you're probably not going to be the best in the world at that. So I'm going to tailor them around you, but you don't have to necessarily have a great deal of experience in that industry or running a business. Most of the franchises will train you on that. I will bring you back the ones that train it. But that's the biggest thing is that when people worry about, we've already talked about the investing part, uh, usually a $100,000, $200,000 uh, net worth is good. We can find you something with that. On that one, credit, yeah, 650, 700. 
we can find you something. And then this is the other one that we just didn't talk about was the experience you needed. Uh, so you don't really, uh, as long as you're enthusiastic, franchises love people enthusiastic, especially if you're enthusiastic about their business, they're more than happy to train you and get you going out there. Well, I'm going to ask you something for myself. So I have my real estate investing, have my online businesses, have my conferences, have everything like my real estate. I have lots of businesses, but I do have a little extra money that I would love to be able to put to work in a business. Are there any franchises? Well, but I'll pause that and say, I don't have as much time as I would to be able to just be like a Chick-fil-A franchise and be working there all the time because I don't want to. But Let's say I had a family member that I was like, you know what? This person would be great to be a part of this a business, and they're they're hundred percent into it. But even if it wasn't a family member, but are there any franchises that I would be able to buy into, create that business, and then put the systems, the procedures, process, and people in place that would be much more hands off? Are there any franchises like that? Because I don't know of any, but maybe you do. Yeah, we call those semi uh, passive franchises, Dustin. On that one, that you can put into place, and there's many of them. So I have. The people that come to me are not all not people that just want an owner operator. They want a lot of semi passive. A lot of my investors are like that. You'll be looking at if you go into the semi passive, ten to fifteen hours a week, depending on your management skill and style is what you're looking for there. And you want to, depending on the franchise system, they may require you to go find out that manager yourself. So if you want to put somebody in place, they'll do it. A lot of them will train that manager for you as well. Some will, some won't. So we need to look for that sort of thing on that one. And then just the skill set that you have there uh, of the people that you bring in. If you can get the franchise yourself and you can do your own hiring on that one, you can bring them in as partners as if you want as well as equity partners. That works as well if you want to go that route. And like I said, there's four or five franchises where if you just want them to run it, uh, they have a team of people running it themselves. But yeah, lots of semi-passive franchises, both in the brick and mortar and in the service industry that you can do. Uh, so many opportunities out there, no matter what your situation. You got me thinking, Greg, because that is absolute. I love businesses and I love the idea of really even providing jobs for other people that want to work jobs. Not everybody wants to be on their own. And so you got me really thinking. So we definitely have to talk. But uh, Greg, this is fantastic. Now, I know there are going to be lots of people that want to check out everything you have on your site. They want to probably hopefully even reach out to you and start their own franchise to become successfully unemployed. How can people find you or reach out to you? I'll go to my website, franchisemaven.com. That's franchise, M-A-V as in Victor, E-N.com. Email me at greg at franchisemaven.com or just pick up the phone and give me a call at 361-772-6401. You give out your personal phone number? Oh, yeah, that's, that's dedication. I love it because I would not give out my personal phone number just because like, man, I don't know how many calls I'm going to get, but you're dedicated. And you, what I love, and there is a big reason why I wanted you to come on the show is because you love to give and you want to help people just like I do. And so I love that you're you're a giver too. So everybody, you definitely need to check out Greg Moore at FranchiseMaven.com. And hopefully you can become successfully unemployed, creating a business through a franchise with other companies that do a great work. And then Greg is going to be able to help you find the right place. But Greg, thank you so much for being on the show. You gave us lots of great insights. Dustin, I was honored to be on your show. I appreciate you having me. Thank you.